the most famous one of which is Nolan Bushnell, who started the company. And they made this thing um, called uh, Asteroids, put it in a bar. It's and for boys only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. And um, a couple of days later, the bar manager called and said, your, your machine doesn't work. And why? I said, well, we can't get it started. So they went down and the coin box had filled. So it couldn't accept any money. And they realized, ooh, this is successful. Um, really, really careful market research there. Um, they then decided to make a programmable thing where you could have a cartridge and change games. Um, this, the 2600, this is one of the original hand wire wrap prototypes on it. Um, which I think is really cool. Um, you're entitled to have a different opinion, but you'd be wrong. Um, so Chuck Pedal uh, actually came out to the, the place where this is being built um, to, uh, to help them design this. They actually produced a custom version of the processor to make it cheaper, um, to be able to hit the price target of the machine. And uh, yeah, Atari did pretty well. And then this this area is all about video games. Um, over there, there is a, a rogues gallery of different machines. So in the um, late 70s and early 80s, a whole bunch of different arcade systems came out. Um, some of these are pretty well known, like the Xbox um, and the Sega Genesis um, and the Super Nintendo. Um, I was in charge of the software for that one. And came up with some of the design concepts. For Which one is that one? The Atari Jaguar. Uh, so some of the, the code that boots up any game that you plug in on your own. And it apparently still works. Which, if you've ever written code, back in, it still works, is something to feel proud of. Um, is there a reason why a lot of them are made over? Um, so the 2600 had a, had some wood grain on it, and people liked it. So it's easier to copy someone than to have a new idea. <laughs> so yeah. Because I don't think the computers there were also like. Well, in in some cases, it's just because it's a cheap thing to build things on. So how how does the gun fit into this story? So there, um, there were a bunch of games that could take advantage of the way television worked at the time, which is to scan the screen and by pointing at a particular spot on the screen and pulling the, the uh, pistol, or pulling the, the trigger, you could tell where the gun was pointed at, and that allowed you to do a, a shooting game. And uh, if you if you've ever met a young boy. Um, they like to go by the bed. Wait, so how did that work? Yeah, so um, there's a photo sensor, and if you if you had vision that did not integrate over a thirtieth of a second, like you know humans do, uh, then auto on a raster scan screen, there's a bright dot that goes along. So you can tell where the thing was pointed by where the dot was. When the dot was. Yeah, when the dot was. Um, so the, the machine that I pointed out the prototype for over there, the um, Atari 2600, is the hardest machine to program that I've ever heard of. Probably the hardest ever made. Um, 
you had to, in your program, generate all of the timing signals. Nothing was done automatically, so you had to count instruction cycles on every branch of every part of your code, or, or the screen would tear. Yeah, it was, it was abysmal. Yeah, um, but they sold it in millions. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then my uh, my time in the, in the business ended about there, uh, but apparently it has continued. Anybody got any questions? Um, I miss the uh, excitement. The pressure was overwhelming. It was it was ridiculous. Um, when Atari shriveled up and died around me, um, I spent about a year um, hiding in the basement. Um, You're still there. I'm not hiding anymore. Oh, okay. I do come out. <laughs> new people. Um, yeah, the the, uh, the the stress was something I couldn't do without. So they don't have one here, uh, but just before that came out, at Atari we developed a uh, computer system uh, called the Atari ST, and it was um, one of the it was the first really low cost, color capable, graphics oriented operating system. 